I run a YouTube channel part-time and also work a job full-time, which can be quite stressful. It also doesn't leave a ton of time in my day for pretty much anything else sometimes and also doesn't let me put as much as I'd like to into the channel. In spite of that, I've managed to grow a, well, still very small, moderately successful YouTube channel over the past few years. And today we're gonna to talk about how much you actually make as a small part-time YouTuber doing this for fun in a year. Hopefully, since I know a lot of people watching this channel are video creators, it may inspire you or give you some sort of direction on how you can take the videos that you're making and use them on YouTube or use your skills via YouTube to generate some additional income for you and make the hobby or passion or whatever it is for you of making videos a more sustainable full-time or part-time thing. So the five most common ways to make money on or as a result of YouTube in my experience are brand partnerships, affiliate links, YouTube ad revenue, digital products, and since I am a videographer, taking on freelance videography work. So we're gonna approach all five of these topics. I'm gonna to talk to you about how I think about them and how I incorporate them into my small YouTube channel and then how you can approach them for yourself if this seems like something that you might wanna take on. Now, the first most obvious way that you make money on YouTube is ad revenue, which is pretty straightforward. If you meet YouTube's requirements to be monetized on long form videos or shorts or whatever it's gonna be, then when someone watches your video and watches an ad before, during, or after it, you get a portion of the advertiser's money that they paid to put that ad there. So for every 1,000 views, I get $8.09, and this is going to be different for every channel. Certain niches make more or less money per 1,000 views, and this is called RPM. And in the whole year, I ended up making $7,773.55, all these numbers are in Canadian, off of YouTube ads, just typical advertisement before or after the video. But when you're actually doing YouTube, the most important way to approach these ads in terms of making money off of them is just don't worry. If you just make good content, people are gonna watch and then you'll hit the monetization requirements and as people continue watching, they'll be shown more ads and then you'll make more money on more ads. If you worry too much about how much ad revenue you're making, you're probably gonna forget about making good content that people actually care about. So I just don't even care about this. I, it's kind of just like a drop in the bucket every month and it's not really a significant amount of money. Anyway, like it's, an, it's good. It's enough to keep you going. And when you're first starting a small channel, it's really nice to get a couple hundred bucks here and there every month just for uploading videos that you like and that other people like. But it's nothing crazy that I think you should be stressed or worried over. Now, affiliate links are links to websites selling products or services that you can include anywhere on YouTube or on the internet for that matter, that pay you a small commission if somebody clicks on your unique link and purchases the product or service that's being sold at the other end. This is something that I feel like has a bit of a sleazy reputation. There's a lot of people who will make websites that just push affiliate links and it comes off really disingenuous, in my opinion, if you push affiliate links the wrong way. So my philosophy of affiliate links is just share links that answer people's questions on my channel. That means that when people ask me what camera gear I'm using, which is something that comes up quite often, that I share links to that camera gear. So in the description of all my videos, there's all the cameras and the lenses and the lights and microphones and things that I use to make all the videos that I talk about linked in the description so that you can check them out if you'd like. And then if you click on one of those links and make a purchase, I get a little bit of money back for that. It's nothing significant, but it's nice because it answers a lot of people's questions at once and gives me a little bit of money back for very little work. So I made, how much was it here? $2,732.55 off of affiliate links and the affiliate link programs that I'm a part of are Amazon and B&H, since those are the ones that allow me to link my camera gear the best. I think Adobe also has an affiliate program that I made joint since people always ask me what video editing software I use, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And there's tons of other ones out there. So if you're someone who's getting onto YouTube, think about what questions you get asked the most. And if there are links that you find you're constantly sending to people, see if there's an appropriate affiliate program because it could be a way to help your subscribers and also help yourself. Now, the form of revenue on YouTube that you're probably most familiar with is brand partnerships, and that's because you see them in videos 
all the time nowadays and it may seem like once brand partnerships start rolling in you can just go lay on a beach somewhere and count your stacks of cash but unfortunately that's very far from true brand partnerships can be a really difficult thing to navigate and do with integrity and especially as a small youtube channel you get a lot of brands reaching out that just aren't offering products or services that are good and that i would never want to show to my audience so as a result i end up declining most of the brand deals that i get but I have done some brand deals on YouTube and on Instagram, which is very much a byproduct of my YouTube channel, both paid and free where I'm just being sent product but not getting any money. And the key for these is to basically just take brand deals that align with my values and are showcasing products and services that I'd actually use. I make videos for people who have the same interests as me. So if it's a product or a service that I'm genuinely interested in, then I feel like it could benefit my audience as well. And then of course, you wanna make sure you're disclosing all of your brand deals. Just outright say if a product got sent to you and disclose all the details. Say if the brand had any influence on the video or not. I don't really like making videos where brands have influence because if you're making a video for a brand like that, then you're basically just giving yourself a boss. And one of the nice things about YouTube is that it gives you a form of independence where you can make what you want. And if other people like it, then you can make a living off of it, which is, beautiful and one of the attractions of doing YouTube. So this year in brand revenue, I made $2,501.49, which is not very much, but this also isn't necessarily the form of income that I wanna rely on because of the sacrifice of independence that comes with it. Next up, we have freelance work. And I guess this isn't specifically related to YouTube, but it's funny how YouTube will increase your name recognition and just make more people aware of what you're doing and as a result generate more freelance work and since a lot of videographers are very reliant on the freelance work that they get to make ends meet and make a living doing what they do i've found that youtube is something that actually helps a lot in that regard now it's a weird dynamic because doing youtube gives you more name recognition it makes people more aware of your services and gives you the opportunity to do more freelance work. But it also makes money for you in different ways and takes up a lot of your time. And as a result, you have less time to take advantage of those opportunities. I've found that I do less freelance work, but when I do decide to freelance, I'm doing projects that I enjoy more and I'm just having a better time out in the field freelancing. So I made $6,435.75 Canadian off of freelance videography this year which is not a lot considering there are people who are doing six figures in freelance, but it's enough. And considering that this is just a side hustle that I do along with a full-time job, it's basically just given me the opportunity to experience some cool things, shoot some stuff I wouldn't have shot before and have a fun time outside with my camera. The last stream of YouTube revenue that I want to talk to you about is digital product. And my philosophy for digital products on YouTube is very similar to my philosophies for brand partnerships and affiliate links. And this is sell products that you use. So the products on my website, which are my sports video love pack for indoor sports, my football video love pack for outdoor and grass sports, the ultimate paper texture pack, which is a bunch of paper textures, as well as some freebie transitions and overlays that I've put together are all things that I use in my videography work regularly. And then when I found that I was really reliant on them and I actually use them all the time, put them out for everybody else at a fair price. And I think that's the best way to go about this type of thing. When you're making a YouTube channel, when your channel gets to the point where you have an audience that's asking for these types of assets that you use in your videos. And I'm pretty sure it's been working because this year I made $27,612.88 off of digital products, which is like just a mind blowing number for me. It's really what gives me the flexibility to make these videos every week and to start doing new projects on the channel, like live streams on the first Friday of every month, and maybe start uploading a second video every week and hiring editors to help me out. And we're gonna talk about expenses in a little bit. But this is the thing that's really opened the door for all of that. And I think just being genuine and selling products that you actually use is the number one way to go about it. Now we've been talking a ton about revenue for our YouTube channel, but we haven't really touched on expenses yet. And 
YouTube isn't necessarily cheap. I got the very base of it when you're just starting a channel. All you really need technically is a phone to record a video and to upload your message online. But when you really start investing more into it and the channel starts growing, now I'm incurring more costs. So we have cameras and lenses and computers that can edit 4K video and sometimes hiring editors and hosting a website, like all these different things. And this year on expenses, I spent $20,921.65. I probably didn't need to spend that much, but I really wanted to put more money back into the channel to see it grow. I had the same mentality last year. And since this video last year, we've gone from about 11,800 subscribers, I think it was, to 22,000 at the time of this upload, which is just crazy growth in one year. And after looking at the revenue that we talked about previously, and then those expenses, the net income from the channel this year was this number that I haven't calculated yet. Now we've been talking a lot about money, obviously, but let's zoom out a little bit and actually think for a second about what makes a successful YouTube channel, even a small one. And in my opinion, the thing that makes a successful YouTube channel is building a really good sense of community. And I found that by dominating a small niche, in my sp specific case, that niche is sports filmmaking, is a lot better than having a viral video here and there because I actually have a sense of community around the channel. There are people who come back to every single video and are frequent commenters and are always watching. And that's really valuable. I love interacting with those people. And I think that dominating a small niche gives you the ability to do that and really build a channel that's more sustainable rather than banking on viral hits. And furthermore, I think rather than worrying about money, you want to focus really on helping people with your videos, making content that's entertaining or informative or ideally both. Because if you're not engaging your audience and people aren't coming back to your videos, then you really don't have a YouTube channel at all. And I think if you're able to entertain or inform people, then success and money and all the other stuff on YouTube is going to, in time, come along with it. Anyways, that's going to be all for this video. So if you'd like to, please subscribe to the channel. I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos, and I guess one finance video a year. And I would love to have you around for all of it. If you have any questions about anything we talked about today, or maybe you're starting up your own YouTube channel or even just thinking about it, then drop it in the comment section and we can chat down there. I love talking with y'all down there. And that's going to be all for this one. So until next time, peace.